Hi everyone, happy Monday or Tuesday. Well, day one um, of spooky season week because it is the week of Halloween and I love Halloween. So hopefully that you'll feel that vibe during our mood, tone, connotation, and denotation lessons this week. So um, this is for accelerated only because we did a lot of different work today. And so if you need any questions or have any questions for me, accelerated babies, just let me know. So we go to our modules. We're in week 10. This is quarter number two. I cannot believe that I've already known you guys for nine weeks. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's look at our lessons and homework for the week. So our objective is I can type diff I can identify different word choices, connotation, denotation, mood, and tone. So by the end of class, I can apply my understanding of word choice through a guided sheet. In class today, we watched a mood bell ringer video and discussion, which I will post for you um, if you need it. And then we did a connotation, denotation, mood, and tone. We did definitions. We did a vocabulary, and then we did the I didn't stole my red hat activity. For homework, you have your application of connotation, denotation, mood, and tone cami due on Friday. Okay? So let's go to our modules. And... Let's go over these slides together. Excuse me, goodness, hiccups. So, wasn't joking about spooky season, babies. Here we go. So, we are learning four new definitions today. Some of them may be a review, some of them may be brand new, which is totally fine. The first one we're learning about is connotation and denotation. Denotation is simply the dictionary definition of the word. If I take out a dictionary and I look it up and I'm looking at the meaning of the word, that is me reading the exact meaning of what that word means. And it could be a Google, it's any definition you have for a word. An example is, people were sitting in a chair relaxing. If I ask you to define what relaxing means, it means lounging, not really moving, okay? Once we get past the denotation of things, which you already know, you've done a thousand times of understanding the denotation of words. Connotation is new. That's the emotional attachment we have to words. Words with the similar meanings, or even the same meanings, can have completely different emotions or connotations attached to it. Let's look at the example on the screen. I have two sentences at the very bottom under example. The first one says, the people were sitting in a chair relaxing. The second sentence says, the people were sitting in a chair in a lazy way. Both words mean the same thing, but lazy is seen as negative. If I always do it this way, if your mom was gonna describe you to somebody, would you rather say you're more of a relaxing type of person or a lazy type of person? I hope you would say relaxing. This is a vocab that you guys can watch. It's about word choice. Now, word choice is simply the umbrella in which connotation, denotation, mood, and tone come under. So when I'm describing what word choices authors use, it could have denotation, connotation, mood, or tone. The reason people use word choice is to paint a picture in people's minds. It creates stronger words, it creates clarification, it explains things, and expands ideas with using words. I have three sentences right here about what Annette was doing. Annette was either one of three things. Annette was surprised, Annette was astonished, and Annette was amazed. What is the general meaning of each of the three sentences about Annette? Do the words surprised, amazed, astonished have the appro approximately the same denotation? Yes. They all mean basically surprised. It's kind of like the basic of the word. What additional meanings are suggested by the word astonished? Would you be more likely or to be surprised or astonished to see a ghost? Most people would say astonished, right? That has a more of a negative feeling. If I said Annette was astonished by your behavior, you feel that. But if I said Annette was amazed by your behavior, that's a little bit different of a meaning. We feel differently hearing that one word being changed. So we have our two words that have already been added on. I'm going to add two more definitions for you. Those are tone and mood. Tone is how the writer feels about something. It's their attitude towards the subject. Oftentimes this is expressed through their choice of words. And how we feel after reading those words is the mood. Mood is how we feel after reading something. Tone is what the author does. Moon is how we feel. There are five main things that affect tone. We've been focusing on something called diction. Diction is just another name for word choice. It's the words an author chooses. The details an author chooses to include are really important. They might include something a little bit more spookier to create a spooky tone. They might use something that's a little bit more 
responsible or polite as a tone. And they might include details from the text that are important to that. Syntax is sentence structure. How long or short a sentence is can actually impact a tone too. If I go, wow, and I have an exclamation point, that impacts a sentence. If I go, insanity, that impacts a sentence because it's only one word. But I've said that test was insane. Sounds different than insanity. That test blew me away. That little short blurb made a difference in that tone. The last two are figurative language and imagery. Anytime you add colorful words, you are changing the tone. Whether that figurative language talk about the beauty of a flower, or whether you provide that imagery to describe the flower, or comparing it with metaphors or whatever, that impacts the tone. This is one of my favorite things that we get to do. Tone can also be interpreted through voice inflection and volume levels, as well as facial expression. So watch my face as I said this. I didn't say you stole my red hat. That's monotonous. That is boring. That is not fun to be said. Now you can change the voice levels at different parts. I didn't say you stole my red hat. I didn't say you stole my red hat. I didn't say you stole my red hat. Do you see how the meaning of the sentence changes when I influx on different words? Listen to this one. I didn't say you stole my red hat. Maybe she borrowed it. I didn't say you stole my red hat. What was it, blue? That inflection of the voice changes it. But watch when I say it in a completely different type of voice. I didn't say you stole my red hat. Do you see how that changes the entire meaning of a sentence? It's crazy. Now, when we go back to here, we need to go to our modules to get to our homework tonight. Okay, accelerated babies. So we will go to right here where it says connotation, denotation, mood and tone application. Now, I know you're familiar with this because Mr. Logan does Cami as well, so that means you already know what you're doing, which is a awesome, perfect. I put some definitions for you guys here that you can always reference about connotation, denotation, some tone and mood stuff as well, in order to help you if you're more of a, I need to read this type learner. If you click the button below, it will take you here. And this is your Cami assignment. Here's how it goes. So, when you have your Cami assignment, you have to read the directions very carefully. Basically, you have to explain right here. This is asking if your mom was to describe you, which word would you pick and why of what she wants to describe you as. This is putting connotation and denotation to your own definitions. This is a conversation we have that I'm going to go over right now. So, it says, look at the examples below. Do the italicized words have the same denotation? So, running every day made Thomas slender and length. Running every day has made Thomas thin. Running every day has made Thomas scrawny. Which has the most positive connotation? Slender, correct. Which has the most negative connotation? Scrawny, right? That is not seen as, as well liked or as well respect, received as the word maybe thin or slender. Where thin is basically, oh goodness, is basically the denotation of a word. I need to undo that. There we go. Here, um, I have the first one done for you guys. So it says, um, looking at these different words, put them into which is the negative connotation, the positive combination, and then the neutral. If I ever said a word is neutral, usually it just is the de denotation of a word. So if you look at number one, I have the words gaze, look steadily, and stare. Stare is probably the one that's the most negative. That has the most negative feelings towards us. Gaze has the most positive. And look steadily doesn't really have any emotion attached to it. I'll give you some sentences to example. She was staring at me from across the room. That sounds creepy. If I said she gazed at the deer outside the window, that sounds lovely. If you said she looked steadily at the paper, I have no emotion attached to that. And that's how we determine connotation. Please do ten, two through ten on your own. This is where you're looking at paragraphs and you're telling me what's the connotation of the entire paragraph, so not just one word. And then I want you to tell me which two words from this passage made you pick that connotation. There's two passages for that. And this is just putting a plus or minus or an N based off the word's personal connotation. Here is the last thing you're going to do. Basically, the underlined words are going to be what you change. So they may have a positive or negative connotation. Provide me a word that's the opposite connotation of that. And that's your work.
Um, if you want to watch the flow cab, just email me and I'll send it to you. It also is available on that PowerPoint and you are set. Again, with any questions, just let me know. Love you.